Let us see Jesus. Let us focus on our blessed Savior. We are going to have a presentation of John chapter 13. Having loved his own, even to the very end, he loved them because they were his precious followers. They were the disciples. They were the ones that believed. And it is no different today in 2020 than it was in the year that Jesus walked upon this earth. For three and a half years, Jesus walked with his disciples and he taught them all the things that they were to do, even as they went forth into the harvest field. And this is where we are today, through the Spirit, through the presence of the Holy Spirit. We are to go forth with the same commission that Jesus gave to his disciples long ago. And we are to be washed by the water of the word. Jesus is the word. And in the beginning was the word. And he was with God and he is God. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Yes, he was the light of this world. He is the life. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life of this world. And the light shineth in the darkness, but the darkness didn't understand because their deeds were evil. We beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of the Father. We beheld his glory for a season. And while he walked on this earth, he taught his followers the very things that they were to do. Greater works, greater things are you to do, because I must return to the Father. And Jesus knew that his journey was about to end. And there was anguish in his heart, not for himself so much as for his disciples, who would be so hurt and so wounded because their Messiah, their precious Jesus, was not there in the flesh. But Jesus returned, and he would return in the, in the Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit that would lead us to Jesus. We would see him even as he sees us. This is our blessed hope today. Now Jesus thought it not robbery to be equal with God because he is God. And he found himself in the form of human flesh. He made himself a servant and he was obedient, even obedient unto the death of the cross. Whereas the Father has given him a name above all names. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Our Jesus, our precious one, he brought that great love into this world. And this love continues to this very day. And we know that nothing will separate us from the love of God. Not anything on this earth today or anything that is to come. No heights, nor depths, no principalities, no powers. Nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Now Jesus came to his disciples and this was at supper time. And he came to each one of his disciples and he arose during the supper, which is interesting. He arose and he walked to each one and he girded himself with a towel. And then he knelt down and he washed their feet. He came to Peter and he said, Peter, you don't know what this is going to be today, but afterwards you will understand. And Peter looked at him and said, are you really going to wash my feet? And the Lord said, yes, I will wash your feet. And Peter said, no. You cannot wash my feet. And the Lord returned quickly. Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you will have nothing to do with me. Now Peter said in his impetuous way, Oh Lord, then wash my head and wash my feet and wash my hands as well. Jesus did just that. He washed the feet of Peter, who is an example of an ordinary man, just an ordinary person who makes ordinary mistakes. And throughout, his relationship with Jesus, he had many dialogues and he made many mistakes. But there were times when he had an amazing revelation from the Father himself. And we see that written in Matthew chapter 16. And Jesus came to his disciples and he said, who do you say I am? 
And right away, Peter, at that point, he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And from now on, Simon Barjona, you shall be called Peter. Peter in the translation is Petra, which means little rock. Now, Jesus is the rock and little rock uh, is the name of Peter. And Jesus said, upon this word, the word that Peter had given, that Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God. Upon that word, all things would be established and the, the gates of hell would not prevail against this word. And then Jesus said, Peter, I give you the keys to heaven and earth and you shall see whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose and the earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, this is the same commission and the same keys that are given to followers in the year 2020, the year we approach right now in this country. We see that the same keys to heaven and earth, the same prayer effectiveness, the same binding and losing that, that show, was given to Peter will be given to us, the followers who believe and are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we go forward into the harvest field in this day, just as Peter and the other disciples did into the harvest field of their day. And it is written in the book of Acts that Peter, the leader of the fledgling church, even his very shadow, would heal the sick. This is what Jesus did during his incarnation. His journey would soon end at Calvary, where he would die for all the sins of the world, and where he would go back to the Father and then release the Holy Spirit into this world. And this Holy Spirit fills us to this very day, the same God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that we believe in today. This is a Bible study on John chapter 13, and we will have uh, three of us reading uh, each a different section, and we're going to begin with Dominic. Thank you, David. We'll be reading John 13, chapters 1 through 17. I'm sorry, uh, chapter 13, uh, verses 1 through 17. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil having already put into, his, into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God rose from supper and laid aside his gar garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. And he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will know after this. And Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. I love that part, by the way. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Now, these are beautiful verses, and there's so much going on. And I picture, I picture John decades later writing this and thinking back on that night where they didn't know 
what was about to happen. And you can tell the camaraderie of these of the of the few years they had together. Um, I I enjoyed and I paused. I chuckled every time I read that because I could just see Peter, the Rock, saying, "You know, you're not washing my feet." And she's like, "I'm washing your feet, dude." And, and if if not, this is you know we're done. And he's like, "Oh, okay. Well, hang on. You can wash everything then." And Jesus just knew. He's like, "Oh, oh, I love you guys so much." And you know, if you only knew what I was doing. And by 17, where he says, you know, if if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Because you you know this, you now need to do this. So Jesus, there the Bible is God's teachings. Are we applying it? That's what he's saying. You know it, now do it. And that's the hard part. That's where the devil tricks us and 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 gives us so much doubt. Just a lot the other day, I was I was thinking, wow, I pray so much I, I, throughout the day. I should record how much time I spend on a stopwatch and see how much time I spend um, praying throughout the day. Because I'm I'm running around 100 miles an hour doing what I do throughout a day. So I just pulled out my cell phone and would hit record, and I would I would say my prayers and just trying to stay in touch with God throughout the day. And at the end of the day, I was so excited. And this was before my evening prayers with the family, but I wanted to see how much time I had spent in prayer. I was so excited. And I, I went into my phone to look, two and a half minutes. <laughs> and it's embarrassing to admit, but I will say it was more than there's days I've had none. And I know this is where, where we think we're doing more than we are, but we aren't. And we are on this treadmill of life. I call it the Jetsons treadmill. We're running and running and running. And all the more we should be spending our time in prayer and doing what Jesus taught us to do, sh spreading the word and sharing the, the good news. There's so much. So I, I say this all as encouragement. Even I struggle and I'm, I'm nobody, but yet Jesus loves me. He loves you. He loves all of us. And, and so he's asking us, not only have, do we have faith in him and what he's about to do is, is for us. What he wants us to do is, is spread that word and spread that love and love each other. Uh, this is this is one of my favorite sections in the Bible. Thank you so much. And now Susan will will read the next section. Thank you, Dominic. Continuing with verse eighteen, I do not speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Jesus is referring and referencing Psalm 41, 9, where he says, Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Uh, continuing with verse 19, Now I tell you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Um, in commentaries, it says uh, Jesus is now stating that he is uh, the Son of God. And um, in John 8, 23, uh, he says, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. And in John 8, 28, he, Jesus says, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father taught me, I speak these things. Moving on to verse 20, most assuredly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me, and he who receives me receives he who sent me. This is a close parallel to Matthew uh, 1040, where Jesus is sending out the disciples and he says, he who receives you receives me and he who receives me receives him who sent me. And in the Jewish traditions, uh, there's a, a um, statement that the messenger of a man is as himself. Verse 21, when Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, most assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another, perplexed about whom he spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus's bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore mentioned, motioned to him and to ask who it was of whom he spoke. 
Then leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now after the piece of bread sin entered him, then Jesus said to him, What you do, do quickly. But no one at the table knew for what reason he said this to him, for some thought because Judas had the money box that Jesus had said to him, buy those things we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Having received the piece of bread, he then went out immediately, and it was night. And um, a commentary by F.F. F. Bruce states that it was literally darkness outside, but also this signifies and was a symbol of spiritual darkness, which enveloped Judas as he left the others uh, in order to carry out his plan to lead Jesus' enemies to the place where he would be found. <clears throat> and in John 18, 2, it states that Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. And now David will continue. Thank you, Susan. So I will be reading from verse 31 uh, through the end of the chapter, the new commandment. So when he had gone out, Jesus said, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. Little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, where I'm going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Jesus predicts Peter's denial. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus answered him, will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow until you have denied me three times. This is a, a very drastic statement by, by Jesus to Peter. But the other very wonderful statement that he makes in this chapter is that he's giving a new commandment, a new standard for us. In the Torah, the Old Testament, there was the commandment, which is the central to uh, God's assignment for all of us is to love our neighbor as ourselves yet some of us don't love ourselves all that well considering how uh, we make wrong decisions that harm ourselves but jesus says uh, a new commandment i give it to you love each other the way i love you jesus always loved us and and did what was best for us as we see in his washing the feet of the disciples and giving them an example for them to do the same. So we have a, a higher standard now, not just to love our neighbor as ourselves, but to love one another as God loves us. That's a, a wonderful command for us to take to heart every day. And as John's uh, verse 17 that uh, Dominic was reading, you, you know these things, happy are you if you do them, King James translation. This uh, prediction for Peter is very striking. He, he says that you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. In the book of Luke, uh, it, uh, Jesus and Peter make eye contact. And uh, some have commented that there was undoubtedly a, a look of wounded love there. Uh, Peter wanted to do the, right, what was best but he was overwhelmed at the moment of testing. And it's an example for all of us. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to live in us on the day of Pentecost and with the power of the Holy Spirit 
and on the basis of what Jesus has already accomplished for us by shedding his own blood for us, but by sending the Holy Spirit, we have power over the enemy. And Peter didn't have that same advantage there of the Holy Spirit living, living in him, but we do. And because the Spirit of God lives in us, we are no longer subject to the snares of the enemy. Now, they're still out there for us to step into them, but uh, if we stay abiding in Christ, walking with him, keep our focus on him, and not veering outside of that boundary that he has for us of life and health, we will win the victory and we will be as what he wants us to be without spot or wrinkle or any such thing when we enter into the presence of uh, our God for eternity. So take heart, Peter. And Jesus also said to Peter, I'm praying for you that when you're converted, you will you will be a leader for your for your comrades uh, and for others. Um, so Jesus knew what was coming. Uh, he's he's letting Peter know. And he, later in scripture, he is uh, lifting up Peter and letting him know that uh, he is forgiven and he is empowered to go and sin no more. So it's a wonderful uh, chapter here and a wonderful assignment to love one another as Jesus loves us. And that will conclude our time. I want to just pray, Father, we do pray that this word would go forth and be received by everyone, Lord, for whom you've spoken it. And that would include each one of us and that we would put into action. Happy are we if we do these words in Jesus' name. Amen.